Welcome back. So after my room tour videos, or at least the first part of it, I decided to make the next video a bigger, larger than life video. So as you may have seen in my room tour video, I already did a build of the 60 clone board, which could be considered a kit somehow. So there's a PCB which you can buy and then you can buy um, a complete kit of parts from the Runs of Restore and the beauty of this build is that you can actually compare it to an existing um, 469 board and it will behave pretty much the same. This build I'm attempting now, which is the handheld 64 by Matthias, is quite a different animal. So this comes as pure PCB boards, plural, and you have to pretty much come up with your own idea of where to source the parts and uh, how to build it. There's no step-by-step -step instruction for this. So for me, this is next level stuff and I would consider this to be a more experienced build because there's nothing you can compare this build to. And Matthias um, is hosting a website called uni64.com and he has done some amazing work on the C64's future in terms of creating new boards and stuff um, and bringing the C64 to the next level. He did an ATX64, which is an ATX form factor board, which you can put into an ATX case. He did the Pulse64, which is my total favorite which is the Pulse Rifle from Alien as a C64 PCB, which you can really uh, build and run. And the Tube 64, which is inspired, I guess, by the um, Apple Trash Can Mac, which is a tube-sized um, PC with uh, some layers and all that good stuff. So head over to uni64.com, um, Matthias' website, and check it out if you're interested. But as I said, this is, I think, for the experience builder. So I did spend a few weeks tinkering around with all the stuff and uh, trying to source the parts. I'm at a point now where I have about 85% uh, of the handheld 64 assembled. I had to wait for the screen, which you may have seen in the last um, retro packages video, the first one. What you get pretty much is the PCBs plus a faceplate for the handheld form factor and let me quickly grab the front. So this is the front panel and it has a full-sized keyboard. You can either go with a gamepad or a switch kind uh, joystick and the C6, it's a real C64. That is maybe the important information that was missing until now. This is not a Raspberry Pi. This is a real 64 running on, on real 64 hardware or chips, if you would like to call it that. And it's stacked or sandwiched together. So you get pretty much such a sandwich and you can play this in handheld mode, which is really, really, really cool if I get it to work, which I don't know yet. So I did talk to Matthias um, via email and he offered his help if there are any bumps along the road. Um, I would like to get this to work myself without his help, but if I get stuck for, let's say, more than three days, I will definitely send him pictures of the PCB, the assembled PCB, and he will have a look. So thanks, Matthias, for that in advance. And um, well, I did film some footage of me assembling this, the kit, but this first video, and I guess there will be at least two parts, in this first part, I want to point out some of the things that might not be obvious. You get a 23 page info book with this build. You can download that from the website even without buying the kit or the PCBs um, in advance. So if you plan to do this, take a look at the book and you will see 
there are some points mentioned, but for the most part, you're on your own. And that is a good thing, I think. So um, don't, don't expect a complete kit. Okay, so without further ado, let's build this thing. Enjoy. Today I'm going to build a handheld C64. All of this are the parts and I have the PCBs right here. Let's give you a quick overview. This is not a kit, this is just the plain PCBs and you have to provide your own components, which I did. Thankfully there's a list of components that you can just upload to at least in Germany, very popular uh, electronics components dealer, which is called Reichelt. So let's start with the PCBs. We have the cover and you can see this comes with uh, the cutout for an LCD screen. You can either use a classic D-pad configuration with buttons or you can use on this same spot um, a switch analog stick. You have to do some different um, circuitry to achieve that. Full size keyboard in terms of uh, the number of keys, not the size of the keys. And actually consists of three PCBs which are stacked or sandwiched together. Um, this one is the expansion for the game ports. You can plug in a game port expansion or simply use uh, the internal one. If you don't need this, you just leave it out. Um, this is the the top PCB where the keys go and the D-pad. <coughs> and this stuck, uh, gets sandwiched on this. This comes on the bottom and this on top. Then you have a nice, I cannot really say flat, but flattish C64 gaming handheld. And I'm very curious to see how this comes out. It's a lot of components. It's not the original um, C64 PCB design. So it's based on one, I guess, but it does have some different components than a C64 due to the size. He had to reduce some circuitry and <clears throat> use some other integrated circuits to um, get rid of some of the chips and well let's I guess build this thing. Um, some other things you can do with, with this before I get into the build you can put a Pi, um, Pi 5041 zero inside of this so you do actually have a disk drive integrated in this. You have an S video port it only takes a 12 volt power supply so there's a change in the circuitry somewhere um, and you can actually use C64 cartridges and plug them on top. So there's room here. So I guess it's time to build. So I did actually miss another PCB which this comes with and here are some surface mount components. Um, so all the other components used in this project are through hole. Um, I'm not the best um, surface mount component solderer, so I'm quite happy about that. So let's get this a little out of the way. This does come with very minor some instructions. So let's have a quick look at the build guide or the instructions. And as you can see, it was pretty recently changed on uh, August 3rd. First of all, let's have a quick look at the features. It has a complete C64 micro keyboard, as Matthias called this. You can add a Raspberry Pi Zero with a Pi 1541 as a disk drive inside the machine, um, or the device rather. You have a slot for two joystick ports, which is uh, optional. You have a real expansion port. We have an S-Video socket, a headphone jack, volume control. We have a built-in loudspeaker and you have a stripe fix option for the um, image on the screen. 
So there's actually no definite reference of a screen to use. You can use any screen you like. Um, I wrote Matthias about that and he um, told me which one he used and I ordered this from AliExpress. You saw me unbox this. Um, the whole construction is pretty much based on a C64-2 model and uses the um, newer PLA, which is more reliable. And for that I had to source uh, C64-2 and desolder stuff, which you will see in part 2 of this video. Then you have a power supply, which is 12 volts. And there's a drop down regulator on the, um, or step down regulator on the board, which takes this down to 5 volts. But on some instances, like the SID chip, you may have to up the voltage to 9 or 12 volts again. So you have to um, add a step up converter. So these Polulu um, step down converters I had to um, order from Polulu directly, which took some time. Um, and Matthias says that you should test the board's voltages, voltages before you put in any ICs, which makes totally sense because these ICs are the most expensive part of the whole project. By the way, these boards, I guess, cost about 30 euros plus um, 10 for the cover plate. So that is quite reasonable um, considering these are one, two, three, four boards. Uh, plus some service mount components, that's a pretty nice price. So Matthias is not making uh, big money on this. So thanks again for um, providing the boards. Yeah, then he's talking about the um, voltages and the clock generation circuit. One very special thing about this is that he combined the kernel and basic ROM, and I guess the character ROM 2, into one on EEPROM, which you have to burn yourself. I never burned Neprom in my life, so that will be interesting to see how that works. Um, and he tells you at which address spaces these uh, three programs or uh, code pieces have to stick on the EEPROM. Yes, we're using a WIC2, but we are using the, um, the 5 volt variants because we only have 5 volts on the board and you can use pretty much any SID you like um, by stepping up or down the voltages, but you have to take care of that yourself. And he tells you which one, which needs what. There's this stripe fix, which I will, I guess, go into more detail in the second part of this video. If you want to put in an internal Pi 1541, which I will not do for the first part or for the first version of my handheld, I will just uh, use the cartridges because there's a cartridge port on top. So this is not interesting for me right now, but maybe for you. So here's the configuration for that also provided. And then he goes on to tell how to actually equip the sockets or build the board. And you have to know that these boards are double sided. So there are components from both sides. And sometimes these interfere with each other so that you have, for example, a component on one side, which is or would be soldered under a socket on the other side. So there are, I guess, two or three points where you have to be a bit careful not to melt the socket, but it's not undoable. So if you're familiar with soldering and uh, I guess if you are watching this, you might, then uh, that shouldn't be too much of a problem for you. Yeah, so this is the order of soldering and there are some more assembly instructions if you are going to use a Pi Zero board and how to mount um, the joystick port switch IC, which was. Then he goes on how to connect the boards because there will be two connections um, from one board to another. The one is the power supply, which you have to connect here and the other one will be, no, there are three connections actually. The second is a keyboard and audio connection, with, which is this pin header right here. And you have a third connection for the video, which is also two cables you have to connect from, um, I guess, somewhere here to somewhere over here. You can also provide some batteries, but you have to come up with your own battery charging circuit. So or buy one. So I will not be doing this. I will use this. Uh, strictly with a power supply for now. Maybe there will be 
an iteration of this where I do a different version, something like this. And Matthias says you should use an arm sit because it doesn't get so hot and it doesn't need so much power. But it also uses five volts, so you would um, not have to add a step up converter from five to nine volts. Yeah, this is what the what the one of the boards looks like from one side if you populate it with everything. You can see the, the arm sit here, you can see the um, CPU up here, there's the Pi5041 with the Pi0. This is the step down converter, which takes the 12 volts in and puts out 5 volts for the board. We have the keyboard board, which mainly consists of all the buttons and the speaker and the controller, which is right here. And you have your volume knob over here and your headphone jack, I guess, here. Yeah, this is a version where you have the switch joystick if you want that, but I, I'd rather go uh, with a D-pad. And here are some more tips on the image quality, which we will refer to probably in part two. Okay, so that's the guide. Back to the build. First, the exposed IC sockets should be soldered U2. And we are on the main board here, which is this one. Should probably get organized first, but... Why should I? It's all here. So, I guess this is the right one. Yes, this fits. Okay, so I will just give this legs a little nudge so that they stay on. U13. I'm still looking for U2. Not the band. Just spot on the motherboard. actually have a list which I did prepare with some stuff I had lying around like these. So this is a displayed keyboard construction, the other board. And we have U30 which is a 4D66. on the other side of the board. I see. So I guess we are going to solder this right on. And this is an NE555. It's one of those smaller chips. Oh, here it is. NE555 dip. So then we continue with socket U19, which is a CPU socket. And the thing is, you have a socket here, and as you can see, you also have to solder under the socket. That socket is on there for good. Now we are coming to the CIA, which is U9. I guess on the other side of the board. Yes, that's right here. Oh, and now I guess it's the point where I can find out if I can actually solder under the socket or not. And I think I would have left this out for later. 
because then I could reach these pins down there. So this I would have done differently, I guess, because here's nothing on the other side of these. It would be much easier to leave these out, at least these two, U16 and U30, and do these after putting in these sockets. But it is what it is. Now to the fun part, soldering under a socket. So I guess the trick here is to put the solder iron from one side and the solder from the other. So all these sockets are on here. So this side is actually finished, I guess, and now we are going to this side.
this right here is the actual machine. So as you can see, this is these are two layers. There's actually the joy pad thingy, and they are populated from both sides. So this was quite a challenge to get to this point. As you can see, there are some keys already placed here. I have to finish these key rows. Um, I will not use the um, a tiny eight for a because this is only necessary for the switch style joystick. Here's a speaker. You can switch the speaker on off. You can switch on game port one and two. You can switch the machine on and off. You can mount the game ports here with the expansion board, which goes in like this. Then you have two game ports on the side. You can add a speak um, um, headphone and you have some connections. This is the video connection, which connects to this board. And this board again has a connection for, I guess, power. And as you can see, these are populated from both, the, both sides. Um, and these sandwich together like this. And then you put on the front plate and just grab that like this and the back plate like this. And then you have a handheld C64 which actually feels quite nice in the hand. And the great thing is that you really have a full-size keyboard, which not even the C64 Mini managed to do in its first iteration, or any iteration for that. You get quite some parts lists, which you can see here. And Matthias provides some um, lists that you can upload to Reichelt in Germany, which is a component provider, electronics component provider, just like Mauser. But some components are out of stock or were out of stock when I tried to order them. And others were just not provided. So you had to find um, different means of getting these. And that is probably the hardest part for me, at least on this build to get all the right parts. And there were, for example, these switches and as you can see these switches lay flat on the PCB but when I ordered these switches they stuck out of the PCB because the switches I should have ordered were out of stock so I had to come up with a solution here same with the cartridge port as you can see this points upwards but I had to do a little soldering trick because you should use the 90 degree version of this and this was a straight up version in this case and I had to bend the pins myself. Can you see this down here? So I did plug it in with one row only, bend it over and then soldered some wires to get to this point. Um, we have a voltage converter down here which you have to source from a different uh, place. And all in all, this is not a cheap project. Um, here's still a socket missing, which I have over there and have to put it in here. Um, some of the C64 chips are missing still. As I said, this is an interesting build, but I'm, I'm A, not sure if it works in the end without Matthias' help. And I guess we will uh, see about that. I will get you some montage of me putting together the first, I guess, half an hour of soldering. There's one more part. That is that the ROM chips, so the kernel ROM, the basic ROM and the character ROM have to be combined into one single ROM. So you have to program your own EEPROM and you don't use the standard 
C64 ROMs for that. I was pretty confident with the soldering, so there's there was one tricky part. Um, you can see this here. You have to solder from both sides. So first you have to solder these, I guess, if I'm not completely mistaken, and then you solder the other sockets and you have to solder them on top of each other. So you have to solder under the socket. And in the next video I will show you how I finish the project, do the programming of the EEPROM, which is interesting for me. And then we will try this out. So until part two. This is Retro is your new black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and until next time.